That's the news value flow. So where are you? Well, uh, if, if you look at uh, different companies, uh, that's where Google News is. We think, oh, Google is the enemy. Well, they're not. That's where they are. That's as far as they can go in offering people a valuable commodity that they're willing to pay for. It's search. It's, 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 it's related search and so on. And that's as far as it can get. So, oh my gosh, uh, who's got latest on this incident? Boom, boom, you search and then up comes the result. Then Facebook is at the other end. When you share what you've, the, the information you've discovered and then you talk to Google and, and Facebook, it's very interesting. Uh, Google is making a lot of overtures to, to our company to try to get you to collaborate with them. And, uh, and because they're desperate, they're desperate to make sure that, that they, they, they keep you engaged because part of their business is very much based on finding your information instantly. And Facebook, the same. A lot of the conversations driven in Facebook are driven by the content that you produce. People commenting on, 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 on stories that you write, on videos that you produce, on, on information that you do. But then you look at ProPublica, they're very much in the scarcity business. You look at the Huffington Post and they're trying, they're trying to get in the scarcity business. They you do have a lot of very good SEO and SMO and they're very much on the left and they're very good on the right as well in terms of the conversation. But now they're trying to refocus their business on the middle because as you know is is going down with titillating news and so on. Uh, you look at the New York Times and, and they do have a very well balanced uh, uh, flow of, of, of news uh, with value. So in a world of digital abundance, you, you need to be unique. You need to find your scarcity. Uh, you will find the money. Good journalism is scarce. So how do you charge for online content? Uh, how do you find new sources of revenue? Well, this is no longer the question to charge or not to charge for online content. The question is settled, and uh, plenty of people are saying this. Uh, Marjorie Scardino is saying it very clearly. The pendulum has swung back in our direction. Uh, last year, and as you can see in, in United States, more than 300 companies are already charging uh, digital um, you know, for content digitally with mixed results. Mixed results because they're still pretending that they can charge for peanuts. Uh, so the questions are: What can we charge for, rather than, than, than can we charge and not charge, and then how to charge? Well, let's explore that a bit. Um, Eric Schmidt has said very clearly that the internet has replaced the economics of scarcity with the economics of abundance. And let's try to focus on this a bit because it's an interesting uh, thought process here. Let's go back to basics. What's economics? Economics is the management of scarcity. Scarcity means, these are the early definitions of economics, uh, is a, economics is a science which studies human behaviors or relation between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses, which is what we all know, supply and demand. If there's a great deal of supply of a good, then therefore uh, the price goes down. If there's scarce supply of that good, then therefore the price goes up. So let's reflect on that in our business. And, and it is true that people uh, will consume what's useful, relevant, and valuable, but they will not necessarily pay for it. They will consume it. Only what is scarce in economical terms can be charged for. So where's the scarcity? Again, where's the scarcity? Do you have content that is scarce? And if you really want to reinvent the business, you're not going to reinvent it by getting just a digital strategy. You need to go back to, do I have scarce content? Do I really have it? That people are willing to pay for. Not because it's useful and relevant and convenient. Not because I have great SEO and SMO. Not because I have it in a mobile platform. Are people willing to pay for it? You've got to have content that is scarce. So once you identify that, what are the strategies for online content? Well, three options at the moment, uh, and I think it's important to reflect on this. Uh, a lot of people are going for the same as print, wrong, different from print, or totally different. And then there's free, there's metered, of course, and there's the paid model. And we do believe that we must pursue a combined, combined model. If you look at this, uh, chart, everybody talks about the Guardian being the paradigm of digital journalism. Do not forget they lose one million pounds a week. Of course, we've got the Times at the bottom right, which uh, loses uh, 550,000 pounds a week. So both models are completely open and completely closed are wrong. Uh, as often things are in life, black and white is not always the answer. The answer sometimes lies in the grey. We believe that indeed the model to pursue is a metered model. A 
Anita model, a freemium model, we call it rather than a metered model. And what can we, what, what have we learned, learned from, from the early online charging? Well, people are willing to pay for coffee. They are willing to pay. You'd be surprised. The conversion and the reduced traffic is not catastrophic in terms of the stock you've been selling. Yeah? There's still enough commodity inventory for you to keep it going. And uh, the conversion rate we've observed is at least 3% of unique visitors will automatically convert to digital subscriptions. In some good cases, where newspapers have moved into scarce content, you can even charge it, you can have a conversion rate of up to 5 So just off the plate, if you want to do the numerical calculations, just do, well, if I get 5% of my people to convert to pay for whatever you, you think is feasible to charge on a monthly basis or an annual basis, um, do those numbers stack up to the revenue I get from display ads, from banner ads, and so on? Knowing that you will not lose all those banner ads, yes? Um, so 3%. Uh, we've, we've seen two examples in Europe, one in Austria and one in Switzerland, of 9%. 9% immediate conversion rate that they were doing really, really good scarce journalism. And we must keep uh, social media traffic open uh, for any digital subscription system to and very interesting, charging for online may help you uh, to keep the paper product going for as long as possible. <coughs> and uh, bundling the subscription is a very clever technique and you know, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from this. And alongside with this, we need to explore new sources of revenue, uh, not just the digital paywall. But in the old days, you know, we just basically stacked up dollars. We, we, we charged dollars, we made dollars. We just collected them uh, with circulation and ads, in the new system, we need to basically stack up cents, dimes, and quarters through all plethora of new revenue streams, all of these which I don't have time to go into. But this is what I want to show you. <laughs> it's 100 bloody cents to get one dollar. I think if you vision, that's how visually our business has changed. You need to go up to the top right quadrant of four cents on that dollar. That's how difficult our business has changed. And, and unless, unless you've got scarce content, it's very difficult to make that content relevant and, 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 and collect those cents uh, for that dollar. 